This is the story of an obsession, of a gifted young woman who would change not only the menu at her local tavern, but the very course of history. This is the story of Panini Formaggio and the Sims 4 hidden grilled cheese aspiration. Panini started out life at a dairy farm in Henford on Bagley. It was an idyllic upbringing. Though they didn't always have a lot of money, her parents worked hard selling milk to the locals every Sunday and always making sure there was enough cheese to eat. Little Panini had a charmed life, though she was yet to discover just how very charmed it was. Of all the cows on the farm, one was her favourite. Pat and Panini were best friends. They were inseparable. Just look how fucking cute they are! Yes, life was pretty sweet, but one day Panini had to grow up. When she was a teenager, she discovered that she had a secret. That's right, Panini was a magic user, which in these times in Henford on Bagley was a big no-no. But Panini was confident she could hide her magic from her parents. She'd go out every dawn, practice her magic, and be home in time for her chores. The cauldron that she used to practice her magic she disguised as a simple pot to cook cheesy pasta. And it was fucking delicious! But one day Panini's parents discovered her by the waterfall. And they were not happy. They decided to let her stay on the condition that she didn't practice magic again. And life went on as normal. Until... The incident. Despite all of her promises to her parents, Panini couldn't help herself in the end, and one day she started a fire when she miscast a spell. Oh, this was rather alarming for everyone involved. They freaked out for a minute or two, until Panini remembered that her mother's sourdough starter was still inside the burning building. So she went inside. This of course caused her parents to run in after her, and her father to burst into flames. Her mother dealt with the inferno, and Panini was fairly sure that everything had turned out alright. But they did not feel the same way. Her parents sent her away, so in the dead of night, she took Pat and she ran off to start a new life in Glimmerbrook, famously a town of magic users. Panini took well to living on her own. Under the tutelage of her neighbours, she learned that Pat was actually her witch's familiar. Which is nice, isn't it? Panini still milked Pat every morning, and she enjoyed the fruits of that labour, sometimes in slightly inappropriate spots. Yabba. The local baker gave her an apprenticeship where she was able to use her magic to light the fires every morning, and Joanne the baker taught her how to bake. At least to the best of her ability. Yep, yeah, here's Panini having a little need. She was a natural, but at home, she found plain bread was uninspiring, and she was struck by a deeply nostalgic, homesick hunger. She missed that dairy air. Struck by inspiration, she made what is now regarded as the world's first ever grilled cheese. It was quite possibly the most life-changing event of her life to date. Not sated by one, she grabbed another. Holy shit, it was so good! She sat down to eat a third and marvelled at the aroma. The crispy, outside and gooey inside, the sheer yellowness. And this is where she started what was to become her most momentous quest. A series of goals, a lofty aspiration. What was to become her life's work. <laughs> Panini wasted no time at all in going back to her apprenticeship and telling everyone at the bakery about her new discovery. Reception was enthusiastic. Sometimes I'm um, very, very enthusiastic. Every night she would come home and eat another grilled cheese, never growing tired of the meal that seemed to manifest itself on her frying pan straight from the heavens themselves. Look at her flip, she's an expert now. As well as sticking to her strictly dairy-based diet, Panini made friends with the locals. These were magic users like herself who helped her hone her skills. They also helped her meet her goals that she had set for herself, um, much sooner than she had ever expected. But that was not going to be the end of her quest. Oh, Yabosa. No, 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 Panini Formaggio had big dreams. She was a young adult now, which meant she was old enough to drink in taverns, a pastime she rather enjoyed. This is John, the local bartender. Uh, she loved it there despite the rat problem. Anyone who sat still for more than a minute would hear all about Panini's new invention. She told the witches, she told the queen, 
and she told the nobility in the neighbouring lands all about grilled cheese and soon enough she was finished the second milestone in her journey. Time passed and the seasons changed. Panini was a full-grown adult now, in the mid years of her life, and she decided it was time to mend bridges with her family. She remembered an odd letter she'd received from her mother about the possibility of them conceiving a new child. So she packed up her things and went to visit the farm on which she'd spent her younger years. There she discovered that her brother was a little shit. And her mother had taken up painting as a new hobby. She was fascinated by the inventiveness of the subject matter, so she decided to share her invention with her family as well. Isn't it nice to see someone other than Panini eating grilled cheese for a change? Let's just appreciate that for a second. Mm -mm. But back in Glimmerbrook that night, Panini was woken from her dreams by a strange light. She went outside to investigate, and that's where she discovered something amazing. <laughs> Panini returned from her abduction with wild stories and alien technology. For one whole month she worked on the rocket ship until one day she was ready and she was going to visit the stars. But not without her lunch. So brave Panini set out on her maiden voyage, the medieval astronaut. <laughs> she discovered that Sixum, the alien planet, was not that different from Hemford on Bagley with its waterfalls and its mushrooms. She also ran into her original abductors, the space captain Negrogegger, <laughs> and a bunch of other aliens who knew her as the grilled cheese lady. She shared her recipe with them and they were all very duly impressed until the time came when she had to go home. So she waved goodbye any second now, any second now. She waved goodbye, got in her spaceship, and oh no, Negrogegger was in trouble. So she towed the alien spaceship back to Glimmerbrook and the ship's captain was so grateful that he gave her some of his cargo and all the aliens decided to stick around and assimilate themselves into sim life. Do you get it? Do you get it? But it wasn't enough to have humans eating grilled cheese, it wasn't enough to have aliens eating grilled cheese. Panini wanted to spread her message to the sims in the afterlife. It wouldn't be too long before she was able to meet the Grim Reaper, considering the terrible plague that was spreading through this what? universe. Yes, I'm sorry there is a plague. Remember the rats in the tavern? Well, John the bartender was especially fond of these little rats and he liked to pick them up, which I would not advise if you have plague infested rats in your city. And yep, they ran around, they're spreading it like butter and grilled cheese and he got very sick. Panini just so happened to be inside of the tavern the day that he was taken ill and he died of rapid rodent fever. Not a pretty sight. Of course it was very heartbreaking and very upsetting but Panini realized this was her chance to speak to the Grim Reaper about grilled cheese. She gave him the recipe and thus was her quest on this earth completed. Don't worry about John the bartender though, Panini was at the end of the day a magic user and she had a spell to summon him from his grave. She also had another spell, Dedeathify, which was able to bring him back to life. Isn't that handy? Panini Formaggio was now known throughout the universe and the realms of the living and the dead as the Melt Master, the mother of grilled cheese, and she was able to summon it straight from the air. Now I'm very sorry to have to tell you, but Pat the Cow does pass away eventually. But not to worry, because Panini remembered the seed that the ship's captain had given her and she planted a little cow sprout. In her older years, she also took up painting as a hobby, just like her mother had, although she kept to one very specific subject. And one day that little cow sprout turned into a big cow plant called Lil Patsy. Now Lil Patsy was no replacement for Pat who had been the best witch's familiar that had ever lived, of course. But what was special about Lil Patsy is that she liked baked goods. And she produced her own milk. Plant milk. In her later years, Panini Formaggio bought the local playground and tavern and turned it into her own restaurant after cleaning it up. She never married, but she did retain her one true love for the rest of her life. 
Panini hired John to be one of the wait staff and one of the aliens to be her cook. Visitors came from far and wide to sample Panini's menu. She had knights, rogues, fancy ladies, and royalty all coming to have a look at what was on the menu. It was it was one thing. Spoiler, one thing. And Panini Formaggio lived happily ever after. The end. That was a bit weird, wasn't it? Nah, I like I just recorded a whole thing and it was so good and it's I was just like mute the whole time. It's so annoying. I I can't I don't really know how to explain why I made this video other than um I remember that The Sims 4 had a hidden aspiration that you get if you eat three grilled cheeses in a row. It's in the base game, so you don't need any expansion pack. You don't need any of the kits or anything. Um, if you're curious, if you're curious about how Panini's story ended, here is a clip from Chesky Sorch's Twitch channel. Oh, Panini's drowning! What? Panini! What are you doing, Panini? No! No! Yeah. Before I go, um. I was thinking it would be kind of cool to have 200 subscribers for bringing in 2022. I'm about 10 away, so if you're not subscribed already, that would be very nice of you if you would like to, but no pressure. Uh, take care of yourselves. I hope that you are all mentally well and looking after each other, and I will see you next time. I am streaming on Twitch, but very sporadically, but if you would like to follow me there, my username is Hell of Ditties. I'll see you next time. Bye. -bye, -bye.